Well, it's been a while since I've done a top anything on this channel. And um, the thing that kind of inspired this was my phone just went through an abnormal factory reset. I don't know where the fuck it came from, but all I know is I put it in my pocket and then next time I took it out to, che to check the time, uh, it was asking me what language I wanted. And after I had gone through all that shit, I mean, thankfully it saved all of my contacts and everything, but all of my files are just gone. Videos, photos, music, and, uh, you know, I had already started filming for my October reviews for this year, but thankfully I had only recorded one video, so I'm glad that I don't have to go back and redo that many, but... I'm still pretty fucking pissed about it, and uh, in thinking about uh, how I was going to go about downloading music all over again, I decided that the best way to kind of make it easier on myself, um, to kind of shorten the time that it would take, would be to do just a maximum of 10 songs per artist, but even that was kind of tricky. Uh, for some particular artists and you know one of them is this band called Creature Feature they've only got two album they've only got two albums and uh, as well as three new songs that have come out since their last album but I mean I love the majority of the music that they've written and if you've been following this channel for a while now it's no secret that I love them. If you're brand new, go check out some of the poster art that I've made. Most of it has been inspired by their music. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with the band, they do this kind of horror-themed music. Um, they often take pretty terrifying subjects and make them really fun and upbeat just with uh, the way that they're playing it. And, I mean, it's perfect stuff for Halloween parties. Um, so I decided to, you know, familiarize some of you who aren't familiar with Creature Features music with some of the songs which I think are the best that they've done. And for those of you who are more familiar, I know that some of your favorites may not make the list, but, you know, this is just a matter of my own opinion here. Um, I'm not saying that they're the best exactly, I'm just saying that they're my own personal favorites. So, with that being said, my number 10 pick is The Meek Shall Inherit the Earth, which was inspired by a movie called Them. Now, uh, from the same album that this song comes off of, there are two other songs inspired by movies which aren't on my list. There's Look to the Skies, which was inspired by Invasion of the Body Snatchers, which is a much better movie than Them. And uh, there's Aim for the Head, inspired by Night of the Living Dead. Again, a much better movie than them. But, I don't know, there was just something that initially grabbed me about this song. Um, about how apocalyptic and uh, sort of poetic the lyrics came off as. It was a really serious sounding song. And I didn't even realize until much later that it had been inspired by this cheesy movie from the 1950s about giant killer ants and um you know it's that's kind of what i love about it just the fact that they take that uh really corny premise um again from a cheesy b movie from the 50s and uh make it sound so serious but i mean if this were to happen in real life though it would be pretty terrifying um I mean, on top of having those giant killer mandibles, I believe it's ten times their body weight that ants can lift. So, even if just a single colony of ants were to suddenly blow up to the size of men, you'd better hope that you're on the opposite side of the fucking planet, because they're going to cause some damage for sure. So, uh, you know, that's why I made it my number ten.
My number nine pick is Fodder for the Elder Gods. Now, um, I am a huge fan of H.P. Lovecraft. He's one of my top ten favorite authors. I've read every single piece of fiction by him, as well as his essay on horror literature. And uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with him, this song pulls from his Cthulhu mythos, which, to explain it as simply as possible, um, the Cthulhu mythos are this series of stories which revolve around uh, these beings from other worlds which are threatening to devour our planet, and they're referred to as the Elder Gods because um, they're known for driving people insane and forcing them to become their worshippers. And, uh, you know, there have been other songs written about them in the past, most prominently by Metallica, like The Thing That Should Not Be and Call of Cthulhu were both Lovecraft-inspired, and they're both awesome songs. I mean, Call of Cthulhu is the only instrumental by Metallica that I like, but whereas both of those songs relied heavily on a feeling of atmosphere and just a creeping dread, which is the feeling that H.P. Lovecraft's stories give to you, like, they're not, um, as far as I remember, I don't think the world ever ended in any of his stories, but it's more about the idea that it's eventually going to happen and that there are these things out there um, that are capable of destroying us and there's really nothing we can do to stop them. Um, but what I love about this song is it's actually about the end and um, it really delivers just the feeling of sheer panic that would ensue if the Elder Gods were to descend upon our world. I mean, you wouldn't just be standing there in a cold sweat with the hairs standing up on the back of your neck, mouth agape. You would be screaming bloody murder and running around with like a chicken with its head cut off, more likely. Um, and I mean, the song is just so fast-paced and intense. Uh, when the vocalist is singing it, uh, sounds like he barely even has time to catch his breath, particularly during the chorus, which is when I think it really reaches its crescendo of sheer panic. So, um, that's why I love about it, you know, the fact that it, uh, kind of captures, uh, that type of fear that people would most likely be experiencing in the event that this actually happened. There was a scary in the clouds at night. Number eight on my list is Grave Robber at Large, which to me is the least scary creature feature song. I mean, it's a great song for Halloween. It's about someone who's doing something not only morally wrong, but illegal, but he's not technically doing anything to hurt anyone. Um, so it's not exactly scary, but it's just a really fun kind of song, and it it's a great showcase for the kind of dark sense of humor that Creature Feature has. Easily, my favorite part of this song is how the grave robber justifies his own actions. And, um, you know, he doesn't even give a shit about how much people might judge him for what he's doing. Because, hey, at least he's making money off of it. Um, I mean, it's just absolutely shameless in how despicable it is. Skeletal remains are safe in the ossuary, they are quite stale and not worth a dime. Don't think me a fiend, this is strictly monetary fortune calls on our hands at this time. In this occupation, time is instrumental, matter of hours, could plummet the price. The fact it's a crime is simply incidental, freshness is key, nothing else will suffice. Number seven on my list is The House of Myth, which is another one of Creature Feature's darker songs, and just like the meek shall inherit the earth, it's kind of a cheesy concept, 
Um, I mean, I don't know if uh, there were any cheesy B-movies from the 50s that introduced it, but I have seen it done in an animated family film called Monster House. You know, it's about an evil house where something so terrible happened in the past that this place took on a life of its own and became corrupted. And, uh, I mean, I just love how they kind of sell you the feeling of despair. It's got some of the most graphic lyrics that I think the band has written, uh, saying that you'll need to be scraped from the walls if they even manage to find you. Um, I mean, they really drive home that this is not a place to be fucked with. Inside this place, death will not come quickly. Yes, will leave a trace. Death will not come quickly. Yes, it's far too late. Death will not come quickly. You have sealed your fate. Death will not come quickly. Oh, you Number six on my list is Madhouse, which is the most recent song that Creature Feature has released. Um, they just posted it to their channel a couple months ago. And despite what the title may lead you to believe, it's not literally about an insane asylum. I mean, that right there is another concept that Metallica has already covered. And Disturbed has used an asylum as a metaphor for finding peace. But here... This song is about a man who is so far removed from reality that he sincerely believes that the walls of his own house have gone mad and are conspiring to murder him. And um, it's kind of dark and pretty disturbing. It's another song that's got some graphic lyrics. There's um, a repeating lyric in the song where he talks about cutting himself, but... At the same time, it's got this kind of this kind of fun madcap feel to it. Um, I mean, it's just the perfect kind of mixture, I think, of dark and disturbing meets fun lunacy, which you know is really what Creature Feature is all about. I think it's one of their quintessential songs. All of this aggression and fury inside me has seeped into the bones of this old house. You might hear the rings was building up. Short fuse has turned against me Sometimes the race is torn, doesn't cut enough Sometimes it definitely cuts too much Sometimes the anger doesn't always manifest Sometimes the anger's like a hornet's nest I don't know how much I can take I simply must get out of this bad house Nowhere to hide, I can't escape I'm removing and scanning for Number five on my list is Nearly Departed Which is yet another fairly recent song That the band has released and uh, this is a concept that the band has done before about the zombie apocalypse. You know, I mentioned a song earlier called Aim for the Head, which is about killing zombies. But, um, and, you know, that's a great song. It's a lot of fun, but uh, those of you who know me know that I'm much more into darker material. And uh, whereas Aim for the Head gives you some kind of chant, uh, not chance, but it gives you some kind of hope for survival in this scenario. Nearly Departed doesn't even give you a glimmer. I mean, it's saying that this is the end, everyone is done for. And it's not even about a virus that starts, you know, where uh, newly dead people are starting to come back to eat the living. You know, that kind of thing could be... Uh, more realistically contained. I mean, that was kind of one of the things that made Maggie, uh, the very recent film, feel so down to earth. But this song is actually about all of the dead uh, rising from their graves to feed on the living. And I mean, do you know how many fucking dead people there are? A lot. And, um,. You know, that's what really makes this song terrifying for me. But uh, the music is still very catchy. It's still a very upbeat tune that you could play at parties as long as your guests aren't too squeamish. The hordes of decay are crawling this way And they're pouring out into the streets Like 
the soul shells are escaping their cells in their dying for something to eat. Here in thy darkest of hours, prepare for the coming dread. An army of death with their fetid breath and their skin dangling from their bones. There is no escape from this most ghastly of fate, for this is how we must atone. Alright, so after talking about such dark and depressing material, uh, we're not exactly moving on to lighter things, but the band at least makes them feel relatively lighter. Number four on my list is Such Horrible Things. Um, and this is another concept that the band has actually redone. Uh, there's a song on their last album called Bad Blood which uh, shares a few things in common with this. They're both about people who do terrible things and, um, you know, don't exactly feel any remorse for them. And one of the oddest things I found about Bad Blood was that it shared that um, thing where he was saying, you know, I need to be put down uh, for the things that I've done. But... You know, Bad Blood is a little more serious and threatening, and it's a song that I like, but um, this is a case where I prefer the more light-hearted feel of such horrible things. Uh, this song is about someone who not only doesn't have any remorse for the kind of person he is, but actually takes a genuine glee in what he's doing and just doesn't give a shit. Um, even in those moments where he's saying, you know, I deserve to be chopped into pieces or I deserve to burn or what have you, he says several descriptive things, uh, of that nature throughout the song. But even as he's saying those, I mean, it's kind of like when, uh, someone tells a really naughty joke and then, uh, they kind of laugh it off and say, I'm going to hell. Um, that's the kind of feel that the song has. Again, this person just does not give a shit. And, um, kind of like Grave Robber at Large, I just love how completely shameless it is. Number three is One Foot in the Grave, which is kind of like Madhouse in that it's yet another song which takes this disturbing concept and combines it with really fun sounding music. Um, essentially, it's about this man who has woken up in his grave and he can't escape in any way. Like, he hasn't even been buried alive. He's just not allowed to rest in peace. And, uh, I mean... I don't want to die anytime soon, but if I had to choose between the two evils, I would take dying tomorrow over living forever. I mean, the concept of immortality just doesn't sound like a very happy one to me. And as far as the song describes him, it, the man hasn't even done anything to deserve it. Like, it mentions at the beginning that he's a God-fearing man, and yet the heavens have turned him away. And, um, of course, I'm not saying that you need to be a Christian to uh, deserve going to heaven. I'm not a Christian myself. But, uh, you know, again, uh, the music is so much fun to listen to. Like, in terms of the instrumental, in terms of the instrumental work and the melody with which it's being sung, it's easily one of the catchiest pieces the band has ever written. And it's almost a song that you can dance to, despite the subject matter. Gather round to hear a bleak tale in heroin detail, the utmost suffering. There once was a bizarre outcast, a big devil lost soul, searching for his end. Now 
in talking about number two on my list, I've used the word terrifying to describe a couple of the songs on my list already. And, you know, when it comes to the scariest song that Creature Feature has written, it's highly debatable. I mean, it all depends on what you're personally scared of. I'm sure that a couple of you... Uh, when listening to my last selection, just kind of thought I was some weirdo for finding immortality scary. But I firmly believe that Here There Be Witches is the most disturbing song that the band has written so far. Um, and the first time I was listening to it, I was just kind of judging it at face value. And I thought that the singer was just uh, talking about evil witches and such. But upon repeated listenings, I've started to realize it's actually about the evil witch hunters who really existed in Europe a few centuries ago. And, um, you know, in the lyrics it reflects on how they used to dehumanize these people uh, who they thought they were witches. Um, you know, saying things like, uh, cut off their flesh and they won't feel a thing and uh, let's throw them in the river to see if they drown. And even the music, um, you know, it isn't the fast-paced, catchy type of music that the band is typically known for. It doesn't, you know, take light of the fact that there were real people who were being treated like monsters and completely dehumanized. Right away you can tell that it's different from some of the other songs that the band has written because the music moves a lot more slowly and it's a lot creepier and more atmospheric. And um, at the same time, like in the perspective that the song is being sung, it doesn't take any sort of glee in what's going on. Uh, it's from the perspective of someone who is truly terrified of these people and just completely ignorant of the evil that they're committing. So um, just for how sheerly intelligently this song was written, that's why it made my number two spot. Here there be witches and they must be slain Cut of their flesh and they feel no pain Shackle their hands with a sink to the flagellate And finally, my number one pick for my all-time favorite Creature Feature song is what I believe to be the band's most quintessential number. It's one of their catchiest pieces. It's a lot of fun to listen to. And at the same time, if somebody was to consider this to be their scariest song, I wouldn't have any arguments. Number one is The Greatest Show Unearthed. Now, in general, a lot of the music that the band has written kind of sounds like circus music. And with this being the opening song to their first album, I think it's just the perfect introduction for... Uh, how their music feels and it is the first song by them that I ever heard. I mean I mentioned that it could be considered one of their scariest. It doesn't exactly mention clowns or anything like that but uh, it does have some pretty scary lyrics like don't tell your parents that you're coming here because they're soon going to be mourning you and how they disappear without a trace just the only trace they leave behind is some blood on the concrete. It is a pretty spooky song, but um, personally, I just have so much fun listening to it that I don't even mind that. It's another one of those songs that's just perfect for a Halloween party. And, I mean, I can't really put into words just how awesome it is. So, here's a clip. Go ahead and listen to it for yourself. I would be your ticket taker Come inside, it's a dream So the fun has some years No one can hear you scream We can't supply anything That your heart desires But the consequences Will surely be dire Welcome to the lower birth The greatest show on earth We appear without a sound The darkest show around We will leave you in a daze Madness, murder, tears, 